You're listening to Up to the Mic. If you want to learn about the struggles and triumphs of starting a business, performing for sold out arenas, or inspiring those you lead, Up to the Mic is the show for you. Throw on some headphones and get ready to listen as our host, Benny Hale, sits down to showcase the stories of those who deserve their stories be told. From young entrepreneurs to critically acclaimed musicians and so much more, Benny helps compile a season of interviews that inspire listeners to follow in the footsteps of his guest. What's up, everyone? You are listening to Up to the Mic. I'm your host, Vinny Hale, and today we're going to be diving deep into the world of business degrees. I have a couple of them myself, and if you're a student considering a business degree or maybe even someone looking to switch careers, then you've come to the right place. Today, we're going to be discussing the diverse job opportunities, salary ranges, preferred locations for each job type, and any career progression for business graduates, or like I said earlier, maybe those just looking to make a career change. So let's say you are someone who've just graduated with a business degree, or perhaps you're about to. Congratulations. Your options are plentiful. And I'm going to go ahead and start by breaking down some of the major career paths you can explore. There's more than what I'm going to go through, and I'm only going to hit it at a high level, but I'll try to give some experiences that I've seen firsthand. First up, we have careers in finance and accounting. First up, we'll go with finance. This category encompasses roles that you'll typically hear of as financial analysts, investment bankers, and portfolio managers. Financial analysts or professionals in general that do finance play a real crucial role in managing and growing money for either an individual or some large organization. And like I said, that's 30,000 foot view what finance in general consists of. Accounting, on the other hand, is more like tax accountants, auditors, CPAs, or certified public accountants, of which I am one in Texas. We're CPAs or accountants in general really maintain financial records. They help ensure compliance. And then at the end of the day, they can also help provide valuable insights to businesses because we have the level or line of sight into what specifically is making the finances operate in a certain way. And they always joke or uh, professors will always try and attract you to an accounting career by saying that accounting is the language of business. But I know you're not super worried about what specifically you can do with finance and what specifically you can do with accounting. Everyone really wants to know about the salary ranges. So let's talk a little bit about salaries. I'll dig into where specifically you can go to find the highest salaries and what your job life would be there, what it would look like there. But they can vary widely based on role, location, and experience. Entry-level positions in finance, such as financial analyst. Often you're going to start around 50K to 70,000 annually, just depends on where you're at. However, with a few years of experience, you can definitely earn well into the six figures. Finance is known for having very high paying jobs in accounting. Junior accountants and auditors typically begin with salaries in the range of like 45K to 60K, where then senior roles, uh, especially if you have that CPA designation, They can get salaries ranging from like 80,000 to 120,000. And then as you move on up the hierarchy at a large accounting firm, well upwards of that, once you finally get to the partner level at an accounting firm or the MD managing director level at one of the financial brokerages that you might work at, at that point, you're making hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars every year, depending on the seniority level of partner or managing director that you are. It just kind of takes a long time to build up to that location. But if you're willing to stick it out and put in the hours for a tough career, it can be very rewarding in the long run. Now, when we think about notable companies in the finance and accounting industry where you might maybe aspire to work at one day, these are where companies really offer competitive compensation packages and some really, I guess I'll call valuable career opportunities. You're going to see some big names in the finance world, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan Chase, Morgan Stanley, all renowned for their global presence and highly prestigious and sought after roles. Uh, Accounting firms are going to have the big four, PwC, Deloitte, Ernst & Young, or EY, and KPMG. These are really known for big client portfolios, huge career development programs. There's a, a structured, segmented hierarchy that every line of service can operate in. I don't want to dig too much into there. I don't ever speak on behalf of the company I work for. All opinions of this podcast and everything stated of it is a sole discretion of me, myself, and up to the mic podcast. However, with that little nugget aside, to get jobs at these places, it can be a little tough. Specifically speaking more towards the finance geared, you 
typically have to come from a target school, but I'll get into that maybe in a moment. Landing interviews at any of these places, these esteemed companies can be pretty competitive. Some strategies to increase your chances. These are no, you know, quick tips that are going to make you get in, but some strategies that can really help you build a better chance are to get a stronger resume. Highlight coursework that makes your technical ability stand out or your creative ability stand out for that matter. Perform internships and get any and all finance or accounting related experience that you can prior to applying for that role. Network, go to industry events, connect with people on LinkedIn. LinkedIn has proven to be a huge source of growth and connection for me and the podcast specifically, being able to reach out to different people, find people that might be interested in coming and, and sharing what they have to say for an episode of the podcast. But one good thing is you can search for people on LinkedIn based on the different criteria that you're looking for. So what company do they work for? What city are they located in? What was their degree in? Uh, what school did they go to? Look for alumni for maybe guidance and referrals. And then the last one is you have to prepare for the interview. There's kind of the corny saying that, you know, success is where preparation and opportunity meet. Well, at one point, these interviews, especially for finance and accounting, can be technical or very technically based interviews. So you got to be ready to discuss not only your passion for the role, but your knowledge of the industry, your knowledge of the technical technical capabilities, and then that you know something about the company, not just that you're there because you saw they had the highest paying job offer for recent graduates. No, you need to be able to go in and perform some sort of business acumen or showcase some sort of business acumen by speaking about what the company might be going through. Lastly, credentials and licenses. So let's talk a little bit, like I, I know I mentioned the CPA designation, but how you can maybe boost your career in finance and accounting, because the CPA is a lot less relevant for people that might be looking to go into investment banking for that matter. The Chartered Financial Analyst or CFA designation is highly respected in the investment industry. So if you're looking to go more of the finance route, that might be like the golden level ticket that you can get in accounting, the CPA, sometimes an essential if you're going to really advance your career as a CPA or as an accountant. Uh, you'll have to meet the CPA exam requirements, pass the exams, all that jazz. Now, let's move on from finance and accounting and jump to segment number two, where we're going to talk about marketing and sales. Shifting gears to what is the dynamic world of marketing and sales, this domain really kind of encompasses marketing managers, marketing researchers, digital marketing specialists, all these people tasked with some sort of craft, crafting some sort of strategy to not only reach, but engage and garner some sort of reaction from customers. Sales, on the other hand, they're the driving force behind revenue generation. That's kind of like the definitional term there, but really sales has a few different connotations with it. Personally, sales can be an extremely lucrative career if you get into the right line of business with sales, but some common roles are going to be sales reps, account executives, managers, the sales managers that you report up to. These are all the people who basically go out, establish relationships with a client, with a customer, and then they keep those salary, or excuse me, they keep those relationships long and living enough so that one day they can then sell to that person. This is where they start to vary pretty widely is when I talk about the salary discussions. Uh, so marketing and sales, again, compensation can vary significantly based on factors, like I said earlier, of your role, your location, and your experience. Those are the three main things that factor into any compensation package at any level that you're ever going to look for. Entry-level positions in marketing, typically going to offer things like 40 to 60K a year. Again, as you get some more experience, you can get up into that six figure margin, especially when you get into some senior roles. Like if you're the marketing director or uh, the chief marketing officer, you're going to be making well over six figures. Now in sales, this is again, like I said, varies widely entry level positions are similar to marketing in the sense that they'll start anywhere from 40 to 60 K, but very successful sales professionals can be very lucrative careers. If you're in an industry that's very lucrative, think technology, think pharmaceuticals, things like that can earn really, really big substantial comp or compensation based on commissions that is sometimes on top of an already 40 to 60 K base salary. So that's where being able to be a salesman and or a saleswoman and go out there and really stamp your claim or state your claim 
on the product that you're selling, develop those good client relationships, that can make your career be extremely lucrative in a very short amount of time. Now, let's explain some of the different companies you can work for with sales and marketing. Again, I'm going to kind of speed through this a little bit because I don't know the sales and marketing realm as well as I do the finance and accounting. But some standout companies are going to be Procter & Gamble, Coca-Cola, Apple, all of them known for innovation, huge, crazy, awesome marketing campaigns. They all have got a major global presence. Sales realm, those are kind of marketing related. And the sales realm, companies are going to be Salesforce. They're going to be Oracle. They're going to be IBM. They're going to be all technology-based. There are others, but these are going to be the largest because tech sales is where you're going to make the most money because it's constantly changing right now. And so being able, and again, I guess pharmaceuticals goes along with that, but if you're able to go in and help a company deliver some sort of tech that maybe they don't need and, or excuse me, maybe they don't know that they need, that's when you're going to really get a lot of income coming in. To get interviews in a sales or marketing position at these companies specifically, it can be pretty competitive. Some strategies that can help you get noticed, same as I said earlier, build a compelling resume Get some experience on there, even if it doesn't have to be with a major company, some sort of relevant sales or marketing experience. Attend those events, look for people on LinkedIn, leverage professionals who you might already know or who are already in that desired field, and then prepare, prepare, prepare for your interviews. You got to be ready to discuss not only what the passion for the role is, you got to know what's going on in the industry, what's going on with the company, how you're going to go in and have that business acumen already where they're not going to have to train you up to catch you up to speed on what's going on with the company. As far as credentials and licenses go with sales and marketing, for marketing, there's like Google Ads credentials, HubSpot inbound marketing is a new one that I heard about the other day. I don't know a ton about it, but I figured I'd throw it in there just in case anybody wanted to go check it out. They really kind of help just uh, further showcase any expertise that you have in digital marketing sales. You can get certified sales professional, a CSP designation, or you can get a CPSP certified professional salesperson, both of which can help demonstrate your ability. If these aren't required by the company that you're looking to work for, I don't know that they're going to be the most time efficient to go after and pursue, but at the end of the day, it never looks bad to have some extra credentials. Next up, we are going to talk about careers in human resources and management. So HR, this field includes roles like HR managers, talent acquisition specialists, people at your company who you know, but you don't necessarily want them to come find you because it means you probably did something wrong. People who help with organization development, recruiting, team culture, those types of people that really take care of an organization's most valuable asset. It's people. Management, on the other hand, these professionals oversee teams, projects, entire organizations, and management can be upper management, meaning you went through a long career of maybe technical expertise and built your way into a management role, or it could be that you're middle management where you're managing a group of people delivering on a technical engagement day to day. However, I will subdue the talk about management enough to go ahead and dive into what you really care about. Again, the salary ranges for human resources. Salaries can vary depending again on where you're at, what you got going on, but anywhere from 45 to 60 K to start as you get higher up HR managers with three, four, five years of experience can make anywhere from 70 to a hundred, maybe more depending on the company you're at. If you're at a huge company, you can obviously make more there in management entry level positions often start similarly at like 45 to 60 K. And then again, you have to build up that corporate ladder salaries for those middle management and like senior management roles can range from 80 K to then well into the six figures, 200, 300, 400 K, depending on what type of management and role that you're in. I've got a lot of friends that do project management on construction sites. They make very, very good money for themselves. Definitely can get up into those six figures as you begin developing that level of experience. Some notable companies to work for, for HR management. HR, you think about what's just a big company, right? So your Googles, your Amazons, your Microsofts, all these people known for having creative offices, innovative HR practices, all these crazy employee benefit packages. You're going to have equity in the company. You're going to have unlimited PTO, all these amazing, but sometimes over exaggerated benefits. In management, again, like you're still going to have some big companies. You're going to think of like your GE your Procter & Gamble, like I said earlier, IBM, like I mentioned earlier, 
great opportunities for management professionals because you're going to be constantly leading a team and those companies have so much going on that it's often hard to see the breadth of the whole environment because you're going to be like focused into one little facet of the company itself managing your team and what's going on with that specific engagement that you might be delivering on now getting interviews again i'll touch on it one more time for those of you who stopped listening when i was talking about one of the segments that you aren't interested in but you got to have the resume you got to have the experience on there even if it's nothing crazy it's got to be relevant experience you got to be able to network you got to learn how to talk to people you got to put yourself out there use linkedin find people that are doing what you want to do find people that have already done it find people that went to the school that you're trying to get into or work at the company that you're trying to work for those things are going to help you in the long run and even if it doesn't happen immediately it can happen eventually because speed is more important than direction psych i said it backwards direction is more important than speed ah all right uh credentials and licenses for this segment here with hr management i didn't actually know this i had to look these up because i wasn't 100 percent sure like what specifically you would get to go into hr management but there are the professional and human resources or phr the senior professional and human resources or sphr and then the hr Oh, you know, these are all from the HR Certification Institute or HRCI. I had to look back at my notes at that one because I did not remember those. But in management, there's definitely one that sits high atop the mountain from the others, and that is the MBA, so the Master of Business Administration. This is definitely extremely highly regarded, can open doors to senior management positions on a little bit of a lower level or maybe just a different direction is the Project Management Professional or a PMP or a certified management consultant or CMC, like my boy Christian McCaffrey. But these can be beneficial for specific management roles that you might be looking for. It just kind of depends on what company you're looking to get into and what you might want to do. Now, for those with an entrepreneurial spirit, starting your own business is always a viable option. So let's take a little bit of a closer look at some different entrepreneurship careers and the paths that can range from starting your own business to becoming what's known as an entrepreneur within an existing organization and, and kind of driving some growth from within. But we'll start with potential earnings all over the place. I can't really give you a range. Uh, as a startup founder, your income may start low or you could be losing money as you you know invest in your business. But as your venture takes off, you could potentially earn millions and billions or whatever. You know, you know how entrepreneurs have this story and, and this line of sight into something bigger than themselves. That, that's where it could come from. However, People that start out often have almost sole equity in the company that they're building. So that's why you could see huge payoff in the long run. Companies that you might want to work for that are more entrepreneurial in nature. So say you don't want to start off on your own company, but you maybe want to have some line of sight into entrepreneurial type work. In the tech world, you got companies like Airbnb, you got Uber, you got SpaceX, disruptive, innovative approaches to business, people that are known for breaking out of boundaries. They move fast, they break things, they do things differently. You got different industry sectors, like you got Tesla, Patagonia, Warby Parker, one of my favorites, get my glasses from there. All these gain tons of recognition for their commitment to sustainability, to innovation. They've got all kinds of things going on that can really attract someone that has that entrepreneurial spirit to go and work for those types of companies looking to get into one of these companies i'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on it I, i'm i don't have a lot of salary expectations i don't really know what else to tell you about entrepreneurial journeys that you might not have heard in a previous episode so jump back to one of the later or earlier episodes if you want to check it out really the only thing i'll really break it down for as opposed to going into like i said how to get into these companies etc is the skills and knowledge that you need to be a successful entrepreneur. So in entrepreneurship, there could be specific credentials or licenses, but those are less common. Having the right skills, having the right knowledge, that is what is crucial. You gotta understand finance. You gotta understand marketing. You gotta understand operations. You have to be able to effectively run a business or pitch some extremely innovative idea. Not only that, you don't have to be technically sound, not only technically sound, but you have to be good at networking. You've got to be able to build relationships with people that could be investors or sales people. You've got to cultivate some sort of network of contacts and mentors, people that can not only give you guidance and support, but people that might be able to support you financially. And then one of the most, <laughs> probably the most important one is adaptability. The entrepreneurial landscape, I guess you can call it, is constantly changing. 
You have to be ready to pivot. You have to be ready to embrace new challenges. You have to be ready to lean to the edges of that comfort zone and do something that you might not have set out to do in the first place. And that brings me to the last sector, consulting. Consulting is definitely an exciting field for business graduates. There's a few different types here. Management consultants, they're the people that'll help organizations. I'm going to give the technical like definition here. Management consultants help organizations improve efficiencies and solve problems, which I know is so vague. Everybody always asks, what do you do as a consultant? And it's really hard for me to tell them because it is pretty vague, but I help organizations improve efficiency and solve problems. Consulting firms that you're going to see here are like McKinsey, BCG, Deloitte, you know, they've got this like realm of consulting firms that kind of, again, sit atop their own hierarchy and mountaintop that is hard to break into unless you went to a target school. It's like getting in to one of the firms, like if you were working IB, salaries are definitely great in this field though. So often ranging from like 70K to 100K for entry level positions, if you get into like the big three, so I'm talking McKinsey, Boston Consulting Group, and Bain. If you get into one of those three and then you can kind of like throw Deloitte Consulting in there as like the fourth, but really the big three, your entry level salary is going to be at least 70,000. And then depending on what specific line of consulting you're going into could be 80, 90, hundred K. What other criteria do you have leading into that? Do you have an MBA? Do you have a technical master's degree? Do you have a CPA or a CFA designation? All of those things can help you build up your credentials. If you have an MBA and you're in the consulting world, you automatically make like 50K more. I, I mean, that's not, don't take my word for it, but pretty much like if you have an MBA and you're in legit like management or strategy consulting, you instantly make like 50K more. You probably paid like 150K just to go back to school and get the MBA itself, but it'll pay off in the long run after a few years, you know, you kind of get your money back on it, but that's up to you. Let's talk about, you know, how to move up as you move up the ranks. You're definitely going to be earning six figures. Uh, even if you don't start out at that 100K mark, you're going to be making well into the six figures. Similarly to kind of like the public accounting or the finance route, there's a very structured hierarchy. So you're going to be analyst or associate or consultant, whatever like that base level is. They all call them something different. And then after that, you're going to go to senior. And then after senior, you're going to go to manager. And then you'll be a senior manager. And then you'll be a managing director. And then you'll be a partner or partner, managing director kind of sit on the same level. The differences there being whether or not you buy equity into the company. But aside the point, those people are going to be making absolutely bonkers amounts of money as you get up there, 500, 600, 700, 800, a million dollars or more. Again, just depending on the seniority level that you are in the firm, how long have you been a partner? How long have you been an MD, et cetera, but you can make tons and tons of money. Now I can go into some more facets of business. There's a few that I didn't touch on today. I didn't touch on supply chain. I didn't touch on logistics. I know some people probably are going to come at me for that, but don't worry. That'll be coming in a later episode. I can dive into a whole nother facet of other jobs for people that maybe didn't come from a business background because I work with a ton of people in the consulting world that came from a computer science or an engineering or a liberal arts type of degree. And I can tell you all about what I've learned from living and experiencing a work-life balance with those people. What are they like? What are the things that they do well? How did they end up getting into these roles and how you can follow these steps that they did to eventually accomplish the same goal? The last thing I want to talk about here is that I really, really appreciate everybody spending the time to listen in and take a glimpse of the world of career opportunities for all of the business degree holders, finance, entrepreneurship. There's something out there for everybody. And I want everybody to really take some time to listen back and think about what it is that they want to pursue a career in. I want you to leave me a note in the comments, hit me on LinkedIn. You can find me on LinkedIn, Vinny Hale or up to the mic on LinkedIn. Leave me a comment, connect with me. I want to hear from you guys. I want to know what you're up to. I want to help in any way that I can. I had a few calls earlier this week with people who just found me on LinkedIn through the podcast. We hopped on a call for 15 or 30 minutes. I connected with them, gave them some contacts with people I know. I think one of them's about to get a job in consulting now. Like I want to help you guys out as much as I can. So please, please, please feel free to reach out. And last thing I'll note is that a lot of you keep watching the podcast episodes on YouTube, but you're not actually subscribed to the channel or you listen to it on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, but you're not actually subscribed to the podcast. So do me a huge favor. You're already here and hit that subscribe button on whatever platform that you're currently listening on. And thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Up to the Mic. If you found it helpful, please share it with anyone, your fellow students, 
anyone considering a career change, whatever it is, don't forget, go subscribe to the show at up to the mic underscore pod, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks. Let's go. Yeah. I'm like an addict, do I gotta have it? I ain't even playing, got a really bad habit. If it moves, gotta grab it. Fuse like a magnet, lose won't have it till I'm doomed in a cat.